feel that bitterness of appreciation. Like, I just stay right there. If you lift your hands for 30 seconds and open up your mouth, and I need you to give God great worship and let him know that he is perfect in all of his ways. Come on, open up your mouth and give him at least 30 seconds of good worship. He's perfect in all of his ways. This is a God who's never made a mistake. This is a God that does all things out of the counsel of his own will. This is a God who knew enough about this man that he decided to put him home to be with him.
don't take all of that. But when God has done something for you, when you come through some stuff, praise is my response to who he's been to me. And if you're quiet, that's cute. But wait till you go through something, you're going to need this same praise.
God, my God, my God. This is what you call a homegoing celebration.
increase in our prayer of comfort right after that. Uh, our reflections are going to be coming. And those reflections are coming from Pastor uh, Erwin Charger from the Calvary Baptist Church of White Plains, New York. Then right after that, that's as a leader. Then as a friend, uh, Reverend Marcus Lewis is going to come back. He's going to give us remarks. Then right after that, I know the Catholic home, she's going to come. And she's going to give us remarks as a pastor. Then from there, as a brother, you can earn a stipend. And then we're going to see, are we going to see the video? Is that for no. Pastor Cousins. Oh. No, he's, okay. he got a letter. Okay, great. So we'll have a letter. We'll, we'll hold on to that letter. We'll put the announcement out. Okay. And then right after that, uh, Elder Hammer Thickpin and also his elder brother, Mr. Jason Thickpin, they're going to come and they're going to give us remarks as a father. Let's do that in that order. Sure. And then we'll come back and we'll move from there. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. 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 to God and to this family, to Mother Thickpen, who loves so dearly, to our presider, Bishop Sterling Davis, Amen. and to our religious aide and the doctor. <laughs> He's not there. But we thank God for being able to have this opportunity to come. How many know we need the Lord right now? We need God. We need God to help us unite this family. I know you need Him. Can everyone stand up with family? Family, you may see it as we prepare to pray. Let's change the atmosphere a little bit. I need the old.
to make sure that we do this. Amen. All right. So let's get ready to see our uh, our, our, uh, our reflections that are coming, and as they come, they will come decently at the door, and then we'll get ready to move on further so we can get the door to the Lord. Amen. Come on, Pastor Tom. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We give honor and due respect to the bishop, to our eulogists, and to all the brothers and sisters in Christ who array this place, either yoked or unyoked. But we've come to celebrate a prince who has gone home to receive his reward. We thank God sitting there and trying to remember several things. I have a written text in front of me. But while I sat there, I wanted to make clear that I've known this man for 47 years of my life. He, along with a group of junior deacons, would invade our little Baptist church in Greenberg, New York. And they would come and shout and dance. And I wanted what they had. Eventually, I got it. 47 years ago, in a place called White Plains, New York, there was an emphasis on young men serving and living for God. It's ironic the fact that some years later, for the last 11 years since I've been pastor of Calvary, I've been his pastor and his wife's pastor. Several years ago, when we were at Bishop Jake's convention in Orlando, Florida, he told me off. <laughs> and he says, you're my pastor, and you haven't come to see me yet. And from that day forward, We've been friends ever since. We cut up on the streets of White Plains. We cut up in diners. Wherever we saw each other, we would just start laughing and just enjoying ourselves. There was a momentous anniversary that he invited Calvin to come to the Bronx, where we celebrated him and celebrated the work that God had given him to preach and to teach. I need to do something pastoral real quick. It's something that was done to me when my father died. My please have the sons to please stand. This is what was said to me when my dad left me in 1986. There are the words from David to Solomon. And David said to Solomon, I go the way of the earth. Now show yourself a man. Yes. God never takes our fathers out of our lives unless he knows that we're ready for the next level of man. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to each one of you. May the Lord pour out his blessings and grant you his peace. For well, you now represent his next level yes, yes, of ministry, yes, that's right. yes, yes, of this man. Yes. Amen. As the pastor of the Calvary Baptist Church, it is my due honor and my due respect to give these words. As there are members of Calvary that are here, and we give you honor to do it to you, to you think, and we're glad to see you. On today, and Reverend Wilson, who is in the back, yes. along with his wife, who has traveled from my plans. Yes. These are the words, as his pastor, I want to say. In reflecting upon the life of my dear brother's life, I have chosen the passage from 2 Timothy, which well describes the final days of our dear brother. Paul said these words to Timothy, I fought a good fight, yes. and I kept the faith. The Apostle Paul knew that his time was now coming to an end. Paul said that his life was now being poured out like a drink offering. 
His service to God, his service to humanity was about to close. He reveals that in his departure that he was now loosening the ropes because his tent was now going to move to another location. He reveals that the Christ nature in him that where he was was just temporary for this was not his own. Paul makes it clear that this physical departure would only be for a minute. For to be absent from this body is to be present with, the, with God. Paul reveals that he was on a marathon. And in this marathon that he had to climb some hills. But he kept on going. He had to go through some boisterous winds. But he kept on running. He had to go through some body pain, yes, but he still kept on going, though he was exhausted. Yes, he, did. he kept on going because he knew that he had to keep the faith. Uh -huh. This man called Joseph <laughs> dared to call God his Savior. He put his trust in him. He put his family's trust in him, and he kept on going. So just a few weeks ago, an angel whispered into his ear and said, Hush, my son, things are going to be all right. Or don't worry about all the things that you haven't done because now your work is finished. I know you feel the ground even from underneath you, but don't worry about it because I've got you in my hands. On, and then he whispered into the ear of that servant these final words. And he said, don't worry about your family. They will be fine. I'm just taking you away and they will come to your side. Put your mind at ease for your soul will now be at rest. And because you are my servant, I will bid you a sweet rest. Good night, noble prince. May angels take thee to thy rest. And may all we that know you celebrate how great your God is.
searching for the scripture while I get myself together. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, yes. which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. As I come before you today to talk to you about pastor and pastor, I count it an honor to be here, um, to be before you um, representing Pastor Thickpen and all that he taught us, and representing Little Mount Calvary Miracle Church. As a pastor, um, pastor was very, very unique. He didn't go by the regular rules of church and pastorship. He tried, he tried. And he knew that there were things that we needed to do. But Pastor was a man very unique and, and um, he didn't always go by the rules. And we learned that that was okay. Um, because nobody was going to tell Pastor about Pastor. And uh, I was trying to think of the words to put together. I could not come up here and try to put something together so fancy and so proper because even though Pastor liked fancy things, like every time I wrote a letter and it went out, it had to be in a fancy font. And that's how he would tell me, make it look fancy. Make it look fancy. And even though we we know that he is he is an honorable man, we know we have great respect for him. Pastor Thickpen was down to earth, to where all of us could reach him, and he could reach us. At Little Mount Calvary, we know <laughs> we knew his voice. We knew that in a, a room full of people, when we heard Pastor's voice, we know our leader was there. And we felt like everything was gonna be over because he was there. As a pastor, he led us, not from the front, he was always in the back. And he was always watching and making sure that we got it right. And if we did it, we heard that voice. And we would know that we had to get it together and that we had to do it right. He taught us, not only in Wednesday night Bible class, not only in Sunday morning, Sunday school, he taught us with his life. And everything that he did, he glorified God. And that's why I thought that, that scripture, there were so many, um, so many that we, I could have pulled, but this one that tells us that God would give us a pastor, and he gave us a pastor after God's own heart. And he lived that life, striving for God's heart. And he fed us, he fed us with knowledge and understanding. The understanding that every time you left Bible class and Sunday school, every time you left a counseling session, you understood it better because he took the time, the time. And it didn't matter if we were in Bible class for five hours on Wednesday night or if we ran over in Sunday school for He wanted to make sure that we understood. And as we depart from this place after today or after tomorrow, and we all go to our various places, 
there is a piece of pastor thick pen in each and every one of us. So as a church, and nobody could tell him, it did not matter. Nobody could tell him about what a rock power is. Because we are his members. And that's what he would say. Those members. He taught us so well. And he made us believe that we can do anything. And we can. Even if you were good at something. <laughs> He made you believe that you were the best at whatever it was. And so as we continue to grieve and mourn, we can look back at the pastor that God strategically placed in our lives. And he touched our heart, and we have never been the same since. And so I say to everyone here, let us just continue to think about those memories. Because anytime has to went anywhere, you didn't forget. Even if you didn't know his name, you didn't forget the way he made you feel. That's right. Because he had time for everybody in the room. 